What is up, YouTube? Very special interview. Got my girl Jayra here. She just closed her first wholesale deal ever. Say what's up, Jayra. Introduce yourself. How old are you? Where are you from? And just a little bit of backstory about you. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Jayra. I'm 22 years old. Um, I am born and raised in Orlando, Florida, but I am Puerto Rican. Um, so a little backstory about me. Um, like, do I just talk about like wholesale? How'd you get into wholesaling? How I got into wholesaling? Okay, so um, funny story. I actually wanted to become a realtor. Like, I knew I wanted to be into real estate, but I wanted to be a realtor. I took the courses, I took the exams, I did the fingerprinting, I did the whole thing. Like, I was already on track to be a realtor. Um, then I came across wholesaling. I found your page on YouTube, and I was like wholesaling what's that like, I had no idea what that was Wait, so, so you found out about wholesaling from me yeah I didn't I didn't know what wholesaling was wow yeah I had no idea what it was so I got curious and I was like oh wholesaling what's that so when I reached out to you you know that the first time we ever spoke on the phone that's also when I bought an event to go like to like this multi-family event thing where they ended up trying to charge people a forty thousand dollar mentorship I remember like, that you were like yeah. talking about it and I was like, is it this, this, this? And I was like, oh yeah, that's this thing. I, yeah. Been, I went there. yeah. So I went there and then I realized that's not for me. So I got my money back. And with that, I bought your mentorship. That's what's up. And what do you mm -hmm. think about it so far? What do I, what? What do you think about the mentorship so far about paying me? Honestly, best decision I've ever made. Honestly, like I've bought other mentorships in the past and you're like, you're on it every single day. I love the morning meetings. I can call you whenever, you know, because there's a lot of people that have courses and stuff, but they're not with their students. Like you, you don't even have their number, you know, like I knew I, I knew I made a good decision, like picking you as a mentor. Like even before I paid you, I was like, there's something about this guy. I need him as a mentor. So, yeah. It means a lot. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Wait, so you only, you found out about wholesaling from me. Mm-hmm. You've known about wholesaling for like, it was only like, what, a week or two before you joined my mentorship? Yeah, literally. Because I found your page, like, I think a month before I hit you up. Because you were posting a lot of like personal development content and wholesaling. Um and then that's, I think I hit you up like a month later, like after I found you. That was crazy. So you only been knowing about wholesaling for about two or three months. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. One thing about <laughs> you that I could say is, and it just, it's a testament to everybody else who's watching this. Like you don't have to know what you're doing. You don't have to be an expert in real estate. You really don't have to know anything about real estate. Eric Klein is a good example of that. You just need some hustle and some discipline yeah like you know but yeah when you get to pay for a coach it's easier because somebody's there to like hold your hand every step along the way and like help you to shorten the learning curve so let's talk about your first deal you've been in the mentorship for i could probably check really quick but i think mm -hmm. it's like 35 days or 40 days or what is it i think like 50 50 50 something. I joined in July. Okay. <clears throat> Actually looking it up right now. I don't care. Mm. Showing one member. Well, e either way, 50 mm -hmm. days. Let's just say it's yeah. 50 days. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm going to look it up. I'm looking it up right now. So what do you, how much was the deal for? Um, Like how much it sold for or how much did we make? Mm, how much did you make? Uh, 3.2K. 3.2 is what you walked away with. Yeah, that's what I walked away with. And there was a JV partner on this who helped you find the buyer. Yeah. And then how much did... They get paid. They got 3.2 too? Yeah. yeah, it was 50 50. That's what's up. Gina, Gina, 
okay, just go talk to my mom on the phone. But, um, I don't know. Here, you want to come over here? But, um, all right, 3.2, 50 days. What was the journey like, really? Like, honestly, was it was. It was very challenging. I remember in the beginning, I was just locking up any contract because I remember in the beginning it was like, you guys need to have nine contracts in place at the same time. And I'm like, I need to get nine contracts. That's exactly what I did. I did have nine to 10 contracts. They were all terrible contracts. Um, they all fell through. Sellers were mad at me. Um, there was one seller that was mad and demanding uh, earnest money. You, you remember that. You yeah. had to... You had to act like you were like my manager or something like that. You know, a lot of situations where sellers were like genuinely pissed off at me, like really stressed me out, but it was, it was worth it. And honestly, I want to go through it again. <laughs> like I want to go through it again because if I go through it again and if I go through it for longer, I'll probably get another deal, but a bigger deal. Yeah. The hustle phase doesn't last forever mm -hmm. because it is a, phase or a level or a part of the level up is like you have to lock in and you have to be on monk mode for a little bit um then you start gaining momentum and then um once you once you gain momentum it's easier to go out but once you start gaining momentum things just start coming to you deals just start coming to you leads just start coming to you Money just starts coming to you. It's it's real, but definitely in the beginning, I know how hard it is, like getting your first deal. And yeah, I didn't have a mentor. Well, I had one at one point, but not to get my first deal, not to get my first uh, four deals or maybe for three. I didn't have a mentor. Like I just had to get out the mud and figure it out. And uh, that's why I find purpose in the mentorship and like dealing with beginners. Because like you said, I could just like charge a certain amount of dollar for a course and not have to deal with uh, beginners. Or I could, you know, sell a higher ticket item for people who are past the beginner phase. They know what they're doing already. They just want to scale. Um, so yeah, that is a big part of it. Um, so what is what would you say was the biggest hurdle in getting your first wholesale deal? Ooh, biggest hurdle. I would say there's a lot of them. But I would say the biggest one would probably be, I guess, just trying to get sellers to, like, trust you. Because I've had a, huh? Sales. Yeah, sales. Yeah, sales. Because, like, some of them, even if you, like, let's say you gave a price that they want. For some reason, they're still like, eh, you know, we didn't build enough report. Yeah, I think that's another awesome thing about the discord about the mentorship because i use it too like i built it for myself but also like to help others but yeah we we've learned so much about sales just since you've been in there too like mm -hmm. the way of the wolf by jordan belford we watch sales videos all the time we're reading all the time we're writing our word tracks and then yeah one of the biggest things that i learned from the way of the wolf is the three tens of certainty you got to raise their certainty in the product in you and in the company and there's emotional certainty and then there's logical certainty. So yeah, sales can be tricky and difficult. And that is the main thing that you're learning. It's like, you're learning a bunch of things at once you're learning. Cause I'm not just teaching you just how to get a deal. I'm teaching you how to operate at a level to where deals are always coming to you. And uh, yeah, sales is a big part of that. Um, so kind of walk us through the deal. I want to talk about the deal and like the story of it and like, just walk it through, just run the app. Yeah. So, um, it was a deal in Ohio, Warren, Ohio. Um, I called the seller. She was very nice on the phone and, um, you know, I gave her, I, huh? On yeah. On Zillow, on Zillow. I, I, Call her, gave her an offer on Zillow. She agreed to it. She signed. Then I call up my JV partner in Ohio. And funny, funny story. I met my JV partner through Zillow as well. I was trying to do like the, the pitch, and he's like, "Oh, I'm a wholesaler." I was like, "Oh, are you really?" And we've been connected ever since. And I was telling him about the deal. He was like, "Oh, this is a great deal because 
she was telling me like during the phone call, like, oh, is it possible to sell the house, but I can stay as a tenant? And I was like, I've never had anybody ask that, but I mean, I guess we'll find out. And he was like, yeah, I mean, see if she can pay twelve fifty for rent. You know, that, that will really attract the buyer. And so she agreed to pay twelve fifty for rent. And then there was three cash buyers that went to go see the property. They were all very interested. Um, but there was one that they just ended up going with. And like throughout the entire process, the seller was very difficult. Things had to be her way or the highway. Like she was driving me and my JV partner like crazy. Like he would call me up, like, you believe what she said? I'll be like, I would call him like, you believe what she said? Like <laughs> she was driving us nuts. But, um, and it was originally going to be like a lending deal. Um, then the lender just like ghosted everybody. And then the buyer was like, you know what? I have the cash for it. And just went from a lending deal to a cash deal like this, like just out of nowhere. And now, now everybody's happy. And now she's looking to do uh, more business with me in the future. Cause she has two other properties that she needs to fix up. And then once she fixes those up, she'll be coming back. The seller. The seller. Oh, cause I remember mm -hmm. you told me that the seller was being very difficult. She was like threatening to cancel. All right. So really quick, you said, boom, I called her on Zillow and I locked it up. Mm -hmm. What, what was that? Was it that easy? Like, I mean, I guess so. Cause I didn't really have to do like much to, cause she was already very flexible, already very flexible. She had it listed for 70. I think I offered like 52 and we just went with that. Um, but then like throughout the process, huh? For, I can't remember if it was first offer, but I remember we agreed to 52. Um, and then the, um, the, the while the entire process she was like i need to net 53 and just, she just starts like switching up and she was like i didn't agree to pay 1250 but we got her to, to sign an agreement that where she's going to pay 1250 for rent after the closing so now she's paying 1250 for rent but honestly the phone call with her was pretty smooth it was pretty easy just throughout the whole process she was just very difficult she was getting kind of salty because she found out you were making some money uh, yeah she found out my jv and partner and i were making money and she was just salty just saying that she wanted to net 53 instead of 52 and that she didn't want to pay 1250 and i was like oh my god is every deal like this i was like stressed it out i was like is every seller like this man but i'm glad i went through it because if it was like an easy super like a super easy deal like i probably wouldn't have appreciated as much as you know this deal being super hard and it went through yeah. I appreciate it a lot more. Yeah, you do appreciate it a lot more. Absolutely. And, um, you know, you probably wouldn't have got that, you know, lock up contract easy if you weren't hitting hitting the numbers every day. So walk us through inside the mentorship. I don't even think I went into this in any of my other interviews, but like in the in my mentorship, in the coaching, I lay out a process, a tried and true proven process to hit certain numbers every single day. It's called KPIs, Key Performance Indicators. Uh, it's definitely not easy. It's simple, not easy at all. What was it like hitting those KPIs every day? And um, what do you think was the biggest struggle with hitting those KPIs? Um, In the beginning, like in the very, very beginning, like I would say like my first five days, I found it really hard to hit my KPIs since I was very new. I didn't have any buyers or wholesalers that I could really like, call so in the very beginning it was all sellers and I found it very 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 hard but once like I got to like the first full week I started hitting my KPIs um honestly with time and time it started to get easier and easier to the point where like there's days where I do more than the KPIs like there's days where I have 30 conversations and like five cash offers like just because you know like I'll finish my KPIs that like two and I'm like okay what now and I'm like well just keep going you know oh yeah those KPIs that's the key to everything how would you say the discord has helped you not just me as a teacher but I'm saying like the community of the discord how do you how would you say that helped you and just your career your self-improvement just everything in general honestly it's helped me out a lot because I talked to some of the the students like you know, I'm like, hey, how are your KPIs going? Or we're, we'll hold each other accountable or I'll talk to them on the phone. You know, I, I'm really glad that there's like a community like this because 
there's some mentorships where there's no community at all. And it's just, you pay thousands of dollars for videos and you don't know anybody who's doing it as well. And then you just end up quitting. So I feel like that's really helped me as well. The fact that there's other people going through the same struggle and grind and hustle. Um, that's really helped me a lot. Were there times that you were thinking about quitting? No, I never thought about quitting. I've always thought like, dang, this is hard. Oh, I'm stressed out. But I've never, quitting has never been a thought for me. Yeah, I know. I, yeah, I get that. It's the same thing. I was the same exact way. But I mean, like, were there days where you were just questioning, like, is this going to work out? Like, is this worth it? Yeah, there were. There were certain days where I was like, is this, is this? gonna work like is this worth it but but I was like man I gotta I gotta keep going I gotta keep going I got big dreams like I can't just quit because it's hard no like it's whack I can't do that yeah that was me too I was the same exact way I just knew I was quitting was just not an option but there were sleepless nights you know nights I'd pray and cry <laughs> and stay up till three or just not sleep at all because I'm just like you know, in panic mode, paranoid mode. I got to make it happen. Um, sheesh. First deal. 50 days. That's amazing. What do you think? Um, what are you doing right now? Like, and what do you think is next? Just in general. Yeah, my next step. Um, you know, I'm trying to get another deal, but um, I call sellers and I call realtors too. Like the first part of my day, I call realtors because you you can make a lot of like good deals with realtors. I know with realtors it's a bit harder because they're more on the seller side, and but it it can definitely be done. Because I have a friend who's been wholesaling for like four years. And he's like, Jira, wholesale with a realtor. You know how many deals I've done with realtors? And I'm like, all right, all right, I gotta try it. So every day I call up realtors. I ask them questions about the roof, HVAC plumbing, things like that. Then I call them back like 30 minutes later with an offer. Like nine times out of 10, they say no. But I'm like, I'm going to have a realtor one day that's going to tell me yes. And it's going to be a sweet, sweet deal. So, you know, I, I only call realtors in Florida though. Um, but yeah, that's what I do. And I call sellers as well, just to like double my chances every single day. I'm going to get another deal for yeah. sure. Absolutely. And I think that uh, there's... I think the realtors is just a, it's a different niche. So there's different niches and there's like a thousand different ways to wholesale real estate. There's on market, there's off market, there's for sale by owners. Uh, you know, then you have, you could go by like cold calling or texting bandit signs, direct mail, or some people only do JV. Um, some people only work on Facebook. So yeah, uh, Realtors is a good way to get some deals, especially uh, for free. Jerry Norton talks about it. That's how he started. Um, I work with Realtors sometimes. That's just not my niche. It's like my niche. Need, like, that's just not m my niche. Just because sometimes, I guess it's from my personal experience. If you find the right Realtor, it's like a gold mine. If you mm -hmm. find the right realtor who's investor friendly and they like wholesalers, they like working with wholesalers, they even want to try wholesaling. It's like, it's like a dream come true. It's, it just makes everything so much easier. But most realtors that I've come into contact with are snakes. They hate wholesalers and they want to take your deal and they want to contact the seller directly and be like, you know, he's actually not buying your house. Right. A lot of realtors will do that. A lot of realtors are snakes and, uh, but anyways, I have realtors in my corner and it's awesome. Yeah. Like I, I call the ones that look all beat up, ask questions about it. I come off like I'm an investor. I found one yesterday and uh, she sent me an off market property. So there's some that like, you know, they're investor friendly. They'll send you off market properties. She emailed me like three of them today. And then she texted me once. She sent me four this morning. I sent, I gave her an offer on all four. She was like, I don't think this is going to work, but you know, I'll send you some more later on. And she's like the type of realtor that like, she's all, she always has listings. So she's like, whenever I come across something, I'll, I'll send them to you. And I'm like, I'm going to do a deal with this lady. <laughs> yeah. That's a good thing about a realtors too is, or once you start perfecting that method, <laughs> have you know, a few realtors that constantly send you pocket listings that they get. It's kind of like a JV, but 
I don't know, it might maybe a little bit better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You don't have to split half of it with them, depending on right. the real. Um Jeez. I just can't get over the uh you just closed your first deal, man. And I know, <laughs> I know you about to get more. You just you gotta keep going, keep going. You're still building momentum. Momentum is the hardest thing in the beginning, but once it comes, it's up. And like it, it gets way easier, way easier. What would you say to someone who just found out about wholesaling and they're struggling to get their first wholesale deal? Uh, definitely get a mentor. That is the first thing I did without even knowing what wholesaling was. That's what I did. You know, don't be stuck in the analysis paralysis thing because it's going to um, set you back a lot more. You'll, you'll, you'll think that you're being productive, but in reality, you're not. So find a mentor and just do everything they tell you and you'll get a deal. Right, right. Um, couldn't have said it better. <laughs> if you want to deal, <laughs> pay somebody to do what they say. <laughs> um, anything else you want to shout out? I know you started a YouTube channel. You made yeah, a follow my YouTube jam channel. Um, it's Jaira dot Mar. Jaira with two A's at the end. Dot Mar. All right, I'm gonna leave the link to your channel in the description anything else you want to say at all to any beginners or anybody anything yeah um honestly if you guys are just now starting out please don't give up please keep trying you will get a deal you'll get multiple deals just keep going and you got this you can do this yeah and i love your positive attitude you've always been positive throughout the whole time and I know it wasn't easy, but every single day you showed up and you were positive and I knew that you took it serious. Not just that you took wholesaling serious, but you took you serious and you took you mm -hmm. take your life serious. And I could see that in everything that you do. It's, you know, some people come here into wholesaling and they're like, oh, it's not working or whatever. It's like, no, it works, bro. If it works, people wouldn't be making millions of dollars doing it if it didn't work. You just didn't. You just didn't work it, and uh, I like that you you take life very serious. You take your entrepreneurship serious, and every single day, you showed up and you're uh, you're you're a leader. You're a leader for the other students in the Discord, and I know they look up to you. And I know they're like some of them. Yeah, some of them are like, bro, how is she? Why? How does she do? My favorite one is, and I'm not just talking about anybody in the Discord, I'm talking about like in general. Mm -hmm. Favorite question is, how do you stay motivated? Or like, how do you do it when you're not motivated? Or how do you do it when you don't feel like it? Like, bro, maybe this isn't for you. Maybe you should just go right. get a job. <laughs> <laughs> like, because you're motivated probably probably like 2% of the time. Maybe, maybe 10. I'm, But like out of 100, you're motivated like, anywhere from 10 to 2% of the time. The rest of the time is just straight discipline and you learn how to build habits and you learn how to do things semi-mindlessly. Or I, I say taking action without thinking. Like just get into the habit of just doing it. You don't have to have a reason. You don't have to have a, pur a purpose. Every single day you wake up with like motivation. Like, no, that's not how it happens. You make one committed decision one time. You find the purpose one time. You find the motivation one time. And you write it down somewhere if you have to, like, I'm doing this, or I'm doing this in life, or I'm going this direction. You make that decision one time, and then after that, you just stick with that decision. That's a mindless, it's a mindless choice to, like, be disciplined. Like, discipline requires no thinking. You know, it's like, that could be taken the wrong way, but I know you know what I mean. Like, mm -hmm. with discipline, you, you cannot be thinking, because the second you start thinking, you're going to fall into... You're going to end up reasoning of why you should not do the thing that you're supposed to do. All right. Before we go real quick, talk about that. What was discipline like for you and like this journey and everything? Like, um, I don't know, just describe discipline in your own words and what it's been like to get this deal. Honestly, discipline is just like just following the plan and not your mood. There was actually a really video of Layla Hermosi where she was talking about that. There's a video she uploaded called brutally honest advice for women in business and there was a part where she said follow the plan not your mood 
So I, I live by that every single day. It doesn't matter how I'm feeling. If I'm mad, sad, whatever. I do it. I have to. Like, I have to hit the KPIs. I have to make phone calls. Like, I feel like I've, you know, gotten so used to hitting the KPIs where, like, it feels weird to not hit them. Although, like, I haven't not hit them, but I have to hit them. Yeah. That's the goal of any habit. It's just you want to do it to where it's just kind of automatic. It's not as hard anymore. And you feel off if you don't do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have that with a, with a few things like I just can't I can't sleep. Just the thought of not doing the thing that I'm supposed to do like hurts my heart. I don't know. Like for me, sometimes like praying at night doesn't matter how long or how short the prayer is. I just got to get on my knees and I got to pray and I got to talk to God. I got to talk to Jesus. There'll be times where I'm like, you know, I finally get finished the work day. I'm done. I already took my NyQuil or ZQuil or whatever. And I'm like laying down and I'll like remember. <laughs> not getting up is like not an option. Mm -hmm. Like I've had that happen a lot of times where. It's like you're in the most comfortable ever. It's like, all right, I'm finally going to sleep. It's already late. It's like one in the morning. Damn, I didn't pray. Now I have to get up, get on my knees, turn the light on, pray, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's, I don't know. With that, like I'm saying, I have purpose and motivation behind that. But every single time in the moment, I'm not thinking about the purpose and the, the motivation and the purpose is already set in my subconscious. I just have to get up and pray without thinking. Like I'm just doing it. Like I'm not, I'm not reevaluating my Christianity to go pray. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm also like that with the gym too. Like if I tell myself, cause like also on my calendar board, like I, I put what days I'm going to the gym and like, like, I just have to go. Like, if I tell myself I'm going to go that day and I have a specific time to go, like, I have to go. And I, like, I start to get antsy. Like, like I think, like, an hour before, like, I just start, like, twitching. I'm like, yep, it's time to go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, I appreciate you. And I'm really, really, really proud of you. And I'm so happy you finally got your first deal. And you made so many connections. You met so many people. You made so many relationships and now you're just a part of a community and, and you're just being a leader and you're growing every single day and I love it. Um, yeah, Real, realistically, I'm just going to see you tomorrow in the morning meeting. And if y'all want to subscribe to Jayla's channel, I'm going to, and if y'all want to follow her on Instagram, how do they reach out to you if they wanted to contact you? Yeah, my Instagram is jayra.mar as well with two A's at the end. Instagram, you said? Yeah, Instagram. I just I just I just got it back. It's been deactivated for months, but I just got it back. Okay. I'm gonna leave Jayra's Instagram and YouTube information in the description. If you want to be a student, just DM me on Instagram. I'll leave my info in the description. If you want my wholesaling scripts or contracts, just email me. My email is gonna be in the description. Let's get it. Appreciate you. Talk to you later. Talk to you later.